Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, I think, to this installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name's Tom Rigsby, your host. Hey, uh, as you guys jump in here, leave me a comment and say hi. Let me know that you're here. I had a, uh, you know, sometimes technology is a great enabler, and sometimes technology is a great frustrator. This morning it was being a little bit of a frustrator. So, uh, couldn't get the thing to start right, but nonetheless, when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, please leave me a note down below. Just say hi, let me know that you're here. That does two things for us. One, it lets me know you're here. It encourages me. I like that. And number two, it gets you set up to stay involved in the conversation that goes on in the comments, even well after the show is over. Had some good stuff going on as late as yesterday afternoon. So, good morning, Joe, Jeremy, to my bride. Good morning, and Keith, all of you guys, and lady, so far. Good morning. So, uh, today is Friday, Free Coaching Friday. So, I've got a great question, kind of following up on a, uh, a question that Vicki asked, actually, earlier in the week. Um, so we're going to get to that in just a minute. Just a quick reminder before I do, if you are listening on the podcast, one of the podcast channels, you can join our conversation live here on Facebook every weekday morning, 7 a.m. Just go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That gets you to the right page. You can comment, get a shout out live on the show, whatever. And if you're watching on Facebook and it might be more convenient for you to listen in your podcast catcher, you can do that also. You can find 7 Minutes in the Morning on uh, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, and TuneIn, I think, are the four places where it shows up. All right, so the question, actually, I'm going to adapt the question a little bit because we were talking about it this morning. The question that uh, that Vicky asked earlier this week was, how do you quit something that other people say you're really good at? That's a really good question. But here's kind of the question behind the question. This is the one that I want to hit this morning. Why am I good at something, but it doesn't fulfill me? Oh, there's a better one. So we were talking earlier in the week about how, about finding alignment with the work that you do. If you do work, the work that you are uniquely gifted, talented, and placed to do, then that's where you're going to find your fulfillment. It will be challenging, it will be rewarding, and that's where all the good things happen. So then the question becomes, well, why am I good at something if it doesn't fulfill me? Right? That's kind of the, it's it's kind of half of that equation, right? I am good at something. I'm obviously gifted and talented at doing something. Let's just say painting rocks. I, I don't know. I'm uniquely gifted and talented at painting rocks, but it doesn't fulfill me. Or maybe the, maybe it's more task oriented where you are particularly good. Hey, here's a great one for me, problem solving. Right? I, it's easy to solve other people's problems. <laughs> a little more challenging for my own problems. But <clears throat> be that as it may, why do we not find fulfillment in things that we're good at doing? Well, here is my opinion. You're applying your gift or talent to the wrong problem. It all of these pieces have to work together, right? We're each uniquely gifted, talented, and placed to do work that matters. That work that matters being creating value, so that we leave a greater net value behind than we take, right? So if you are particularly skilled, gifted, talented at doing something, yet you're not finding the fulfillment, there's two problems there. One, you may be working at the wrong problem. Right? If you are uh, uniquely gifted and talented at accounting, but you hate your job, maybe you're doing it for the wrong company. Or maybe you are doing it for the wrong purpose. Or maybe you are applying it to the, the, the wrong industry. Right? So that's problem number one. Um, and, and that's where... That, that, that's where alignment comes in. I talk about alignment frequently where we not only do we have to have all the pieces, but we have to have them properly aligned in order to, you know, pull them down the track in order to, to pursue that outcome. 
The second problem that you might be running into, uh, why you are not finding fulfillment while you are doing things that you are good at, uh, is you're not solving a hard enough problem. So problem number one might be you're, you're, you're applying your skills to the wrong problem. Challenge number two may be that the problem you're trying to solve, and I guess this would be a derivative of the wrong problem, it's not challenging enough. See, over time, as we get uh, more skilled at doing a particular thing, it becomes less and less challenging because the risk, as we were talking about yesterday, the risk isn't there, the challenge isn't there. It's not as rewarding, therefore, when we finish. So we have to constantly be working to stair-step up our game in order to keep that challenge uh, ahead of us. So, uh, let's see, Joe's got a good comment here. Some do these things just to maintain the lifestyle or perhaps a previous interest that was lo that's lost its attraction. Sure, stop gaps can lead to a permanent situation, especially if you lack passion. Yeah, so... I, this is what I was mentioning yesterday, maybe the day before. Um, a lot of times we start working in a field in a direction because that's that's uh, that's our degree. That's the field our degree's in. That's where I have all my experience. That's where you know my parents wanted me to work. And, and I told you the story yesterday. Told this story on Vicky about her changing career fields and um, looking into healthcare. It, if what you're doing isn't working for you, look, that there's no, and this is where I think we run into the problem, right? And we were talking about this yesterday, that there's some magical finish line. We're going to cross the finish line and oh, the, the sky opens up and the angels start singing and everything's grand. And we can retire, whatever that means, kick our feet up and pop bonbons and all is right with the world. It doesn't work that way. I mean, we move into and out of these success states as we go, right? So for you to, I'm just going to say it this way, for you to labor at work that sucks for your whole life for the promise of a payout later on, I'm afraid is going to leave you disappointed, right? Find the fulfillment today. And every once in a while, day to day, I, I mean, I have a day that's going to be challenging laid out ahead of me today, right? Every day is not going to be great, that's, but that's the moving into and out of the success state, right? But you just want to string together more of the successful days than you do the unsuccessful days. And definitely, don't just endure each day, day after day after day, for some future promise. Today is the only day that we're promised, right? So, it's uh, the quote that I shared a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I want to get that, see if I can find that here quickly, because that was really good and really spoke to this particular point. This was one of the, uh, I tell you all the time on the weekends, follow me on Instagram. That's where some good stuff happens. Only put off, here's the quote, only put off till tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. Right? Today might be the only day you have to get something done. Don't suffer through... Don't, don't make the choice to suffer through something that sucks for some future payoff. But, I mean, yeah, you might have to put the work in from time to time. You might have to deal with those days that are tough from time to time. But week over week, month over month, just not worth it. All right. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut due to the fear of failure says Jeremy. Yeah, I agree with that. Fear of failure comes from a fear of risk. And that fear of risk comes from a lack of experience. The only way to get the experience is to try it. But, you know, to Jeremy's point, I think there's something else that holds people back sometimes, and that's not fear of failure, but fear of success. Man, if all this stuff works out, then all this other stuff's going to change. And I don't like change. I like my nice, comfortable, predictable, what I've got going on right now. I'll just stick with that. That can be just as debilitating as fear of failure, as that fear of success. All right, Keith says, so many of us don't try the vast range of things that we could be good at. We tend to stick at what we're good at 
30 years 30 years ago because it pays the bills right might be a world I might be a world class maker of pottery or maybe not <laughs> so you're right I mean and uh, and there's nothing wrong with changing this whole idea of having a career that you keep for life I don't know about that I mean we might do some things I mean this you know back to Vicky's story about you know wanting the, the Reader's Digest version she wanted to get into nursing so she got into a, a, a healthcare field where she could experience what it would be like and then decided that wasn't what she thought it was going to be like and not the thing for her great it's awesome that you figured that out you know after a year instead of after several years of going to school and then several years of working in it and then feeling trapped in it because I went to school I spent the money got the degree I might as well do it that's a sunk cost you're not getting that money or that time back don't use that as an anchor to keep you weighted down to where you are right make the decision to do something fulfilling today all right I'm going long again today. I got, yeah, definitely. Keith, credit to her for trying. I and, I and that's what I told her too. I, you know, look, I'm I'm not sad, disappointed, upset, anything. I mean, this is. I'd much rather you find out, do it this way, and find out, than to invest a lot. Look, it's what we ask our kids to do when they're 16, 17, 18 years old. Choose now. Choose wisely. What are you going to be for the rest of your life? They don't know, <laughs> and nor should they at that age. They should be able to try a lot of different things to find the one thing, find that application to kind of bring this back around to our question today, find the best place to apply their unique gifts, talents, and skills. We do a terrible job of helping them find those skills also. Those things that they're uniquely gifted and talented at, instead we say, okay, look, plane flying over it's one of the benefits of living close to the airport instead of helping them find those things that they're gifted at we tell them look this is there's going to be a shortage of this in a few years you really ought to get into this field there'll be a lot of money there money is a horrible measure of what you should be doing anyway all right that's it for today thanks so much for being here i appreciate it. if you have questions comments or thoughts on uh, our topic today. Why are you good at something but you don't feel, feel fulfilled doing it? Leave those down in the comments. And if you know somebody that's challenged finding fulfillment in the work that they do, tag them in that comment. Let them come over and watch the video. Join in the conversation as we explore that topic a little bit more. As I said earlier, it's Friday. That means uh, the weekend is coming up for the next couple of days. I want to try and take it easy this weekend, so I don't have a repeat of last weekend. Uh, but uh, I will be putting some stuff out on Instagram. I failed to do that last weekend just because things got a little crazy. I'll put some stuff out over the weekend. Hopefully that will be helpful. And Monday we're going to kick off the naming contest for uh, <laughs> for my co-host back here. Turn where you can see her. So be sure and uh, join for that. We'll have some kind of reward lined up for that as well. All right, that's it. You guys have a fantastic Friday. I'll see you again on Monday with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Take care.